How is reality capture impacting the reverse engineering process? Well, the simple way to put it is there's no better place to start than reality capture. People in the past have tried things like hand measurements, uh, taking photos and marking up the photos and taking as many pictures of the reality object as they can. Reality capture lets you get in the field with a laser scanner and actually harvest reality digitize it and take it back to the office and put it on the computer. There is no better way to start a reverse engineering process. There's a lot of examples of reverse engineering and laser scanning. One of the last ones I dealt with was actually a bridge, a drawbridge. Uh, the reality capture team only had a small moment in time when the bridge was open to capture an exposed gear that needed to be replaced. They could only see 10 to 15 percent of that gear and they can't take it apart, pull the gear out because it's a drawbridge that's in service. So they were able to take a laser scanner and record just that 10 percent of the gear highly accurate and bring it back to the office and take that 10% and array it around to produce the rest of the gear. In doing that, they saved so much time and they did what was in essence impossible. There was no other way they were going to see the entire gear. So they had to record the portion that they could see and then create the portions that they couldn't. The biggest issue with reality capture and wave reverse engineering is accuracy. Listen, these laser scans are highly accurate, but reality is not accurate. Reality is, uh, in, in the gear example, the gear is the result of a tolerance model. We created it in CAD to be perfect, but in reality you produce it with a tolerance. It has to be within a certain tolerance to be acceptable. Well now we're recording our tolerance object and we're bringing that into a CAD solution which is optimally perfect all the time. So the engineer needs to learn to look at the reality and translate what the CAD data needs to be.